We're going to have to learn something that will help us in this world today. We are going to have to get rid of our sugar addiction and we're going to have to learn how to be salty. Because Jesus told us, he says, you are the salt of the earth. And I want us to follow something. This this second person personal pronoun that he uses you. I want you to circle that in your Bibles this morning if you can. Because that you is the emphatic, it is the emphatic second person pronoun, personal pronoun. You know what he just told us when he says that you? So let's get contextual. So first he's talking to the disciples. See, Jesus is getting down to some brass taxes. Because he wants to make sure that even though there are others listening, He wants to make sure that he's teaching the ones who were listening who will go on to preach and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ. The disciples. He's telling them you. He's putting that responsibility on. them. Now, let's move to the second you, because this personal pronoun, if you look at it in the original language, it's not singular, but it's plural. Amen. So he's not only talking to the disciples. Now, when the disciples are are going to go on and share this with people, then the people who hear this, guess what? They become a part of the you. Amen, Walls. And every person who we go out and share this with, we share the gospel of Jesus Christ with, and they become converted. Guess what? They become the you. Now, I want you to follow why this is emphatic, because you know what Jesus told them? He said, you and you alone. No one else. That's why we call it emphatic. You and you alone are the salt of the earth. Can I help us with something? People keep trying to put so much otis on the president of the United States and a president of the United States. Do y'all know this is why presidents get so hated? especially the one we have now, they get hated. You know why? Because people put all of the responsibility that they should be sharing in, they'll try to put it on one man. So people think that everything's going to come from the White House. People also think everything's come from the government. This is why we got some people who want the whole world to depend on the government. That's not what we're supposed to do. That is anti-God. God said a man don't work, a man don't eat. Amen. Amen. We have to realize something. People look at the news. It, 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 it's, it's a sad testimony. I want y'all to understand, it's a sad testimony that we don't even watch the news any longer. I was talking to Oweda on Friday. And me and Oweda are talking, and I'm telling Oweda stuff Kathy, forgive me. You and Lennon, forgive me. Because I'm talking to Kathy about, I mean, I'm talking to Oweed about stuff, and Oweed is asking me, when did that happen? I don't watch the news. Now, you know why Oweed doesn't watch the news? She doesn't watch the news the same reason a lot of us don't watch the news any longer, because we don't want to hear all the negativity. We don't want the world to tell us what to do. We don't watch the news any longer, but we don't. But guess what? The blind sheep are watching the news and the blind sheep are getting their information and they're getting their salt from the world. But we don't watch it because we we don't want that. And just like Facebook church, do y'all know something? A lot of people get all of their information from Facebook, Instagram and all of these social media networks. But I'm sorry, I'm feeling salty this morning. Because we're letting all of those things inform people when Jesus said that the church and the church alone is the flavor of the world. We are the ones who are supposed to be informing the world. And let me tell you what we do. Do you realize Jesus said something very powerful previously? 
He says, blessed are those who, he says, blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say evil against you, you and they accuse you falsely for my sake. He said, rejoice exceedingly glad. He said, the peacemakers will be persecuted. You know what has happened to us? We are betraying being sought for fear of persecution. I'm sorry, but we cannot betray who we are because of persecution or what anyone thinks. I'm sorry, but I'm salty. I'm salty and I'm not bitter. I'm salty because Jesus said I'm salty. Jesus says you are the salt. Now we know we've heard all of this before. Salt can be used as a preservative, right? Salt can be used as a preservative. In actuality, when you read the Old Testament, whenever they would make sacrifices, sometimes they would put salt on the sacrifice to preserve it. Or when fishermen would go fishing, they put salt on the fish. Didn't have refrigerators back then. I even remember, see, I'm old enough to remember that my grandparents, when they would slaughter a hog, they wouldn't put it in the deep freeze. They would just put salt on all that good old meat. Amen. Salt is a preservative. We've heard this before. But Jesus is not only talking about a preservative, but I want to boil down something, this passage, in one word. Jesus said, you have the influence. You, church, have the influence. I've said this for years. You guys, I know you've heard me say it. So goes the church, so goes the world. We actually have that backwards. We think so goes the world, so goes the church. But what happened to the church is that the church stopped being salty. Amen, Walls. The church started 